new and exciting. Well, Jack, <laughs> what's new and exciting, Jack? And these electric cars are just like coming at us fast and furious, either full electric or these plug-in hybrids. And today we're driving a 2021 Cayenne Turbo S hybrid with right? combined horsepower over 700 with the electric and the gas. Um, 568 horsepower with just the gas engine on. <clears throat> so you, you, you don't get hybrids until you really drive one and get to know it. And even me being in the business, I didn't understand it fully mm -hmm. until I started driving one. So I had a BMW 7 Series hybrid about a year ago and I quickly realized and it actually tells you how much of your mileage is electric versus, um, you know, gasoline. Mm -hmm. And it was about 20% was electric that I was driving it. Um, and I do a lot of highway driving, which is less, if, you know, less purposeful for hybrid, but still purposeful enough in my case. So it was great. But if I'm mainly a city driver driving from, let's say, Young and 401 downtown, so all city driving 10k one way i'd be electric all week right go home plug it in never have to go to the stupid gas station like in oh. today's weather freezing outside um and of course you know gasoline prices recently have gone through the roof so i absolutely love this i gotta tell you a very selfish reason i really like this too okay let's hear is, it is the, the hov lanes because you're allowed in ontario to, to with electric cars to drive on and hybrid I get the HOV lane, so I go past all the losers stuck in traffic, <laughs> and I'm driving by. Even though I'm in gasoline mode sometimes, right? Do they look at you like, hey? I don't know. That's only one person in that vehicle. It's a green plate on the car. Interesting. So so the that's so cool. It is cool. It's, I actually had no idea. It's one reason, especially with the, where I drive. It's yeah. one reason I always want to be in a green plated hybrid or electric car. I'm, I love that the hybrids are also in that category, right? Yeah. And so I think a lot of people. Um, Stop. Let me tell you this. I okay. just I just thought of that. I don't want to forget. So, tell if me. I'm a guy that lives in the city, yeah, and goes to work in the city all week, mm -hmm. so electric all week. And then maybe I go to, I go up to Collingwood or I go up to my cottage on the weekend. Oh my gosh, it's traffic. I go up to, I go up, uh, north on the weekend and I want that gas uh, gasoline range and I don't have to worry about the full electric, right? That's why the hybrid is such a perfect option. So um, it's a real good step towards getting to full electric. And mm -hmm. I'm not so sure, like we can go on and on for an mm -hmm. hour about controversy around is electric really going to be the final answer i'm not so sure yeah but hybrid's a great step that may be around for a while and now i saw a new bmw we didn't get to drive it but there's a new bmw i saw in europe uh, a month ago um, at their factory which has got a hybrid range of 100 kilometers now think about that okay that's that is, now we're talking yeah that's game changing wow i know there's some new volvos that are coming out with 80 kilometers the BMW X5 today that we have in the, has a range of uh, 50, 50 to 55 kilometers. So that, that that's like, exciting. That, it's amazing. For someone like myself. So you see now, and I would just kick this car. Yeah, here we go. So I won't say where we're going. No. But, for uh, only us to know. It's pretty fast, huh? Okay. Like, it's so much fun, but if and then I want to be that. The Chris, the boring Chris Five, conservative Chris Five. Yeah. That I slow down. Take it down I a bit. Back into, I go back into hybrid. Oh. I've got a switch here. E, yep. H has hybrid, and then sport, sport plus. So sport, sport plus. I want to go. I want performance. Um, the hybrid mode is both. Okay. And, and electric is full electric. So as long as I have electric power, it'll go into electric mode. If I'm see now. It's, see the rpm just dropped right oh wow but i if i really push it it's going to automatically kick back into gas but if i drive it just nicely conservatively i'm driving along here in electric mode okay and now will it extend the range as you're driving as well like they say 30 kilometers but in fact is it even well, this, a little bit more if you're more conservative it is this car is and it's always like gaining depending on what type of driving you're slowing down a lot it, it, it earns yeah, like electric mileage if you're braking you know, okay. Yeah. Perfect. But the range getting in this car is about 38 kilometers an hour when I get in it in the morning. Uh, and as I said, depending on the driving, if I'm going a lot of city driving, that's good for the day. Yeah. 
I love that. Uh, I think a lot of people who are considering electric, they don't want to make that full leap to electric, maybe based on some long distance driving that they have to do. Yeah. So this is a good... Yeah, and it's like I said, 20% of what I do, and I do a lot of highway, mainly highway, Yeah. 20% of my mileage is full electric, so I'm saving 20% day in, day out, week in, week out. Yeah. Um, but if I was a person, again, doing a lot more city driving, it might be like 80%. Yes. Great. Amazing. I love that. And you see that now we're cruising again in an electric car. It's quiet, 130 kilometers an hour, full electric. You were telling me before we started the interview that electric evokes emotion, but in a different way than a gas-powered vehicle. Can yes. you maybe explain that to so people? So I'm very torn on this issue. Yeah. Because I'm a big, you know, eight-cylinder gas guy, gas engine, horsepower, noise. And you always will be. And there's always going to be that, yeah, that side of yeah. me, and I've kept some cars in case they do really go away, <laughs> so that I will have one. But I mean, I finally have come to the conclusion that electric is can be emotional, but it's a different emotion than a petrol engine or a gasoline engine. Um, and once you come to grips with that, which took me a long time, yeah. you actually can enjoy the emotion of this. And I and I have to say it. I don't want to take shots at competitors, but if I look at Tesla, it really is a commodity. I mean, they've done great things with electric, there's no doubt, but it's a, it's kind of a boring car to get you from A to B. There's really nothing to it. Yeah. And um, that's fine, but the Germans are bringing out really exciting uh, cars with emotion. And BMW, <clears throat> a month ago, had us at a test track in Germany where we were driving back to back the equivalent gas and electric cars and they were proving to us that the electric had a motion, uh, you know, amazing acceleration performance. And, uh, you know, it's very important for those brands because a lot of them are bought on emotion. People mm -hmm. want that emotional feel. Uh, you know, I always say these cars, if I'm leaving work going home now, they can take me out of a bad mood and put me into a good mood and stuff. And, uh, <laughs> I think that's I think that's cool, but some of the you know, other electric competitors out there they're so just vanilla. Less, yeah. less than vanilla. I like vanilla, but less than vanilla. Yeah. <laughs> that's so. right. Boring. boring. Let's just say Very it. Boring. Call it what it is. Let's, let's just, uh, accelerate here. <laughs> Isn't this amazing? The acceleration is so incredible on this car. It is. So this is for an SUV. Yeah. Are so you this, me? this for me is I've been driving this car for two months now. It's a family car. I take the kids to school. It's. Does uh, your wife like it? Carolyn loves it. She yep. had another version of the Cayenne, which we recently just had to sell on her, so we had to take it away. But she had one and she loved it. Yeah. Great size, uh, but it's a Porsche at, at heart and very yeah. emotive. So. Yeah, Let's really talk about the uncertainty right now in the electric car market. We're getting there, we're not there yet, but maybe you could talk about where we're at in terms of how people are feeling about making that change. Jack, you know, it's, a, it's hilarious because the industry and all the manufacturer executives that I speak to, they really don't know yeah. where this is going. Everyone seems to think, oh, we're going full electric in 2030, 2035. It's not that simple, even though governments are starting to mandate those that, towards that direction. The problem is everyone's not thinking about the fact that even if we had 20% of all cars on the road today were full electric, there's not enough power in North America or Europe for that matter to plug these cars in and power the system. The system will go down. Wow. So there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to be built. There's a lot of uh, electric gen you know, generation that needs to come. And then you get into all these philosophical and political arguments about let's go uh, nuclear. People don't want to go nuclear energy, but that's the only clean source of producing, a really clean source of producing electric. So there's a lot of unknowns, there's a lot of uncertainty. Manufacturers, some of them are making full on bets on electric, so it better work. Yeah. Um, and where there's other ones that are hedging their bets and they're still developing conventional gasoline engines uh, until they see where this, this whole thing plays out. But it's. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's going to be really interesting how it happens. And again, different answers from different manufacturers, different industry experts have different answers. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uncertainty. And yet, the, you never want to be that company mm -hmm. that's stuck in the past. 
and that you're not keeping up. So obviously they're producing, you know, all of our brands and all of the brands in general are coming out with many uh, different electric vehicles. It's not just one now, right? It's it's multiple. Absolutely, they're coming at us, you know, fast and furious. Yeah. And, uh, it's a, and you know, it's a good thing and it's, it's, I don't know, it's sort of cleaner because you feel like when you're driving around electric, you're not burning emissions during the day. Mm -hmm. But there's emissions created in generating that electricity that you plugged in the car, and then there's how the vehicle's produced, and at the end of the vehicle life cycle, uh, you know, the carbon emissions that are produced. So there's there's a lot of different things that go into this whole topic. And it's just not clear cut, but it's definitely exciting, and uh, yeah. the world is changing, and it will change. It's just how it exactly evolves remains to be. So there's no secret that there is a shortage of vehicles everywhere, Chris. Can we talk about that? Uh, a lot of people who maybe aren't in the industry and aren't, don't keep up with this may not know the reason why there are no cars. Can you talk about that? Uh, chips, semiconductor chips is a, is a number one reason. It's not the only reason. There's, there's you know, supply disruptions, as you've heard, yeah. ports getting boats unloaded and stuff. That's been part of it. And then also continuing COVID uh, breakouts in different regions where factories have had to shut down. That's part of it as well. So there's a multitude of reasons and it's going to be with us for another year, year and a half, I think. Uh, I've never seen anything like it in the industry ever. Yeah. Uh, so we're short of cars. We're still, you know, we're still getting by. We're still getting enough sort of cars, but not as many as we would have had. And um, it's created a lot of interesting scenarios in the industry. It's it's there's been a good side to it as mm -hmm. well for, for especially for dealers um, and the manufacturers sort of woke up to this constant overproducing of vehicles <clears throat> that they maybe don't have to do that as much in the future even right. when things get back to normal but it is going to be a while it's been disruptive and again I've been around in this industry for a while I've never seen anything like it people are so used to be being able to have that instant gratification they walk in they want a car here it is um, so that's why we're seeing people have to think ahead and and in many many circumstances order right order and wait big, big time so we're really selling into next summer a yeah. lot of cases that's what we're talking to people about um, so yeah, as well they, as pre, the pre-owned market right and we, we always knew pre-owned was a fantastic option yeah so pre-owned as well as tight because you know we haven't been, we've been selling less and less cars and the big you know Goliath to the south of us, United States, so I've been buying a lot of Canadian used cars and taking them out of our marketplace. So there's such a shortage that that used car shortage, I think, is going to continue for two, three years, maybe even a bit longer. It's pretty significant. So as we round out the year that was 2021, when you look back, were there any highlights for you? I mean, a lot of people felt the struggle this year, but if we focus on some of the positives, what were some of the positive things that you saw come out of 2021? I don't know, I mean, yeah, that's, a, that's a tough one. Personally, yeah. I've been very blessed. So that, that's the main thing on families and our, and our team at the dealerships, all that stuff's been great. I mean, the most significant thing for me was our new partnership with Lithia out of the US. Um, that merger of the company's been great and uh, I'm really excited about how that is going. Uh, with our new partners and the opportunities it presents for all of our, our team members. Um, we're going to grow uh, within Canada very quickly and we look mm -hmm. forward to the uh, possibilities and, and sharing um, ideas and practices. We've learned a lot from them um, and even they've learned a little bit from us. But So it's been great so far and very exciting. Thanks, Chris.